Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents, the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today we have issue number 24 for you, The Creeper, and like I said in the teaser, uh, before the teaser for this issue on the last episode, I don't think very many people know who this guy is. Um, he's a lesser known Batman character, uh, he is a hero, although he's kind of gone back and forth for a while, but he's now a hero. Um, his alter ego is Jack Ryder, who, if anyone has played the Batman uh, Arkham games for Xbox and PlayStation 3 that Rocksteady did, they're outstanding games, Jack Ryder was in both of those, actually. He was in uh, Arkham Asylum as one of the character profiles you could find. He's also uh, heard on a radio inside the asylum, talking, giving news reports, and then in the sequel to that, Arkham City, he's a major character in that one. He's actually on screen uh, quite a bit. So, um, you know, he's out there. He's been in some episodes of the animated series and, and uh, Brave and the Bold, I think. Anyway, this is a fun character for me because he's so outside of the box. Uh, not a favorite character of mine. I find his origins kind of convoluted and weird, but we'll see in the magazine, which we'll cover, cover first, uh, which will tell us pretty much everything we need to know about him. Like the Spectre, I'm going to try and go pretty quick through his uh, magazine and gloss over a lot of things because there's just way too much that doesn't matter, uh, only giving you as much of the important stuff as possible. And then we'll look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sit back, relax, and enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, the Monkey Boy, a.k.a. J to his friends, and this is the DC Comics Superhero Collection with issue number 24, The Creeper. First up, we have Creeper's character section. And it's here that we find the Creeper is also known as Jack Ryder, who is a very popular television news reporter who has his own uh, editorial television show, and he is all about doing exposés and that sort of thing. So he heads to this Professor Yatz's uh, laboratory only to find that this geneticist is being attacked by a gang of thugs who are trying to find this same nanotechnological drug that Ryder is there to do a story about. So lying there, riddled with bullets, all of a sudden he starts to stir and his skin changes bright yellow and his hair goes green and the next thing these monsters know they're being attacked by this cackling, maniacal, freak thing out of nowhere. So Jack and this little dual personality of his, the Creeper, um, decide to kind of protect Gotham City, uh, reluctantly at first, uh, and the next few pages just kind of talk about his search to try and find Dr. Yatz, who apparently survived the gangster attack, and we meet a lot of his uh, enemies in Gotham City that he takes on, such as uh, the evil Axeman. Another one of his arch-villains who almost drowned him, a villain known as Proteus. We see him tangling with another dual personality Gotham villain known as Angel Devlin. And he's even teamed up and rescued Batman on a few occasions, uh, one time saving him from this paper creature known as the Origami Man.
For a long time, no one really knew which side of the Law Creeper was truly on, and he used this to his advantage, infiltrating such supervillain groups as the Secret Society of Supervillains. He's also been a part-time member of a group known as the Spirit Squad, and a member of Batman's team known as the Outsiders. Eventually, Ryder did manage to track down Dr. Yatz around the same time that Batman did, and they both made a shocking discovery that Yatz had been secretly working with the Joker the entire time, and that part of the formula that he used uh, for this chemical was based off of the Joker's own toxic venom. Later on in his career, as the Creeper and Jack kind of became more and more bonded, they learned that one couldn't live without the other, and the longer Jack tried to suppress the Creeper side of himself, the uh, sicker he would become, the more uh, frantic and psychotic he would be, so he had to let the Creeper come out. we take a look at some of the Creeper's classic stories. First up, we have the story titled, Beware the Creeper. And this is one of those stories that helps to show the character was sort of in a gray area for a long time. It, it has one of Jack Ryder's informants being murdered by a villain calling himself the Terror, and the Creeper tracks him down only to accidentally drop him off the side of a building. Of course, the cops believe the Creeper murdered him, and the media paints it that way too, allowing for the Creeper to sort of retain this is he good, is he bad sort of status. Next up we have The Brave and the Bold, issue number 80. The Brave and the Bold comic book series back in the 1960s was Batman's team-up issue, basically. Every month saw him teaming up with a different superhero. This one happened to be with the Creeper. And they take on this mutated dude who's calling himself the Helgramite. Um, it's just a fun, zany, wacky, crazy story that could have only come from the sci-fi 1960s. Finally, we have the Creeper. And this is his origin story, finally, his cemented origin story, introducing him to a new generation of characters. We meet uh, the character of Dr. Yatz, we learn that the formula he used was spiked with Joker venom. Uh, and we meet Jack Ryder and this dual personality that he has, uh, and how he's this reluctant hero set in Gotham City. It's beautifully illustrated and really, really cool, actually. Next, we take a look at some of the Creeper's allies and enemies, and on the front page, we have both the Batman and Joker. The next page features a great shot of his sometime team, the Spirit Squad. The Creeper's iconography section just looks at his powers in a little bit more depth, and it also looks at the mental instability that causes Jack Ryder. The longer he goes without turning into the Creeper, the crazier he becomes. We learn that the Creeper's powers include extreme agility, dexterity, he can uh, tumble like an acrobat, he can climb up the side of buildings. Uh, he also has a, a laugh, a cackle, that can actually get so high-pitched it can make your ears bleed. And finally, this issue's original thinking section continues the DC timeline with part 15, Jewels of Great Price. We learn that in 2578 BC, the villain known as Vandal Savage was posing as a pharaoh ruling over Egypt. At the same time, we're also introduced to another ancient hero who is now known to us as Dr. Fate, but was known then simply as Naboo.
here we have the Creeper, aka Jack Ryder. Um, and while he is definitely one of the lesser known DC characters, I mean, gosh, I don't even know if he'd be B list, he'd probably be like C or D list. Um, he, he is uh, an interesting character, and he's been on some things. He was on uh, the animated series, Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, he was on an episode of that once upon a time. Um, he may have even been on an episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold, although I'm not sure because I didn't really watch that show. I wasn't too big a fan. But, needless to say, I love this figure. Um, I love the more obscure characters to start with, and he is just such a, a refreshing change, I guess, from the typical humdrum kind of dark characters we've had thus far. He, he's bright, he's vibrant, I love the color palette on him, love that yellow skin and the red boots and the, the boa thing that he's got going on there and how big and wild and crazy that is. The striped green and black tights, even the black around the cuffs of the boots and the gloves and everything. And his face is really nice as well. He's got a uh, some great detail going on on his face and the way his hair is flowing and everything right there. Um, he just, he really looks good all the way around. It's a nice sculpt and it's just, it's it's nice to have a different kind of character, you know? Um, yeah, overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with him, but um, some better pictures here of Jack Ryder the Creeper in just a second. Creeper stands atop the DC logo and on the underside of the base we have his name along with his serial number. Also we have a quick shot of him along with the Joker. And one more quick group shot with Batman and the Outsiders. So I think I really like this figure so much just because he is, as I said, so different. He's vibrant, he's colorful, I love the pose, how he's like bounding or, or leaping or, you know, even creeping along. He's hunched over, you know, he's not standing up straight with his hands on his hips or arms crossed in front of him, he doesn't look like a superhero, you know, he looks like a, a weirdo, you know, like he's just out jumping around laughing going crazy um it's a great looking figure really uh the good the the sculpt the pose the paint application this time unlike the specter where it had a lot of dirty edges and bleeding it's very clean it's very crisp there's a great wash especially on the red uh boa thingy on his back there's a really nice wash all through there so you get some really great shading and some great highlights uh his face is especially well sculpted he's got that creepy looking kind of sneer uh and the hair how it's blowing up and away from his head like he's jumping around it's it's wild it's great uh his feet as well the way they're up off the ground it's it's a really nice detail um the bad i, I can't find anything bad with this figure honestly there's a little bit of bleeding in some spots but nothing that it really tarnishes it overall when you you look at the good it far outweighs the bad the ugly uh he is fragile at the feet because they're both kind of lifted off he's only on his tiptoes so you want to watch that when you pick him up you don't want to pick him up uh at the base and hold him upside down you want to pick it up by the figure um, overall, really pleased with this figure. Very exciting addition to the line, I think, personally. But I love the obscure ones, you know? It's one of the reasons I really dig the, these figures. They, they're bringing everyone, not just the big guns. They're bringing everyone, which is so, so cool. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this review of The Creeper. Stay tuned for a teaser for the next episode. It's time again, ladies and gentlemen, for a special edition figure. That's right, special edition number three. Uh, it's uh, another really, really great one, one that I've been looking forward to. And we're going back into the Batman universe one more time with this one, the first of many Batman villains that have been turned into special editions. Anyway, thanks again for tuning in. I'm your host, the Monkey Boy, a.k.a. J to his friends. We'll see you next issue.